I'm the host of today's sessions uh, because we are gonna really go into the technicalities of the Cultivate app from the perspective of the operators. So this means that um, I have a brief presentation and then we're gonna uh, dive into the app demo where the goal is really to show you what are the differences between the interface of the registered employees and the uh, interface of the operators and also to provide you a bit of guidance in how the operators can be trained to make sure that they understand um, as much as possible about the structure of the project, about the structure of the app, so that then you are able to, that they are able to do then the check-in and the check-outs uh, using only the app, instead of also having to rely on a manual register. So to start with, I will um, share my screen so that you can see the presentation and we get, uh, we get started with, with that. So, Okay, so here we are, um, module three already. Um, the overview of today's session is first to really be clear about what are the difference between the two roles that we're talking about the whole time, registered employees and operators, so that you really have no doubts about uh, who are the people in your team or the people that are involved into the cold room management. Do they belong to the registered employee group or to the operators group? That's really the first goal of today. Then we're going to go into the walkthrough, which will take uh, quite a bit of time, I think, so that we can really go in detail. You can ask questions if you have. And then um, I want to also give you an overview of the material that we have prepared for, for you to train the operators to make sure that you understand what is the content and also where you can find it. We are going to share with you a PDF after the session so that you have this also in a, in a PDF version. But part of the material, it's already on the Cultivate app, so it's just important for you to understand where you can find it. And uh, then there are a couple of organizational things that Selena is going to uh, take care of. And in the end, I really want to have enough time for questions for you to address any issues that you might have, both on what we saw uh, in the past modules about the registered employee interface or the operators that we're going to see today or anything else that you want to address. So the, the aim is to have maybe a bit of a shorter session so that you have more time for, for question if needed. So the goal of the session is really, as I was saying, first to understand this uh, split between who's a registered employee and who's an operator, and then um, let you understand what are the main differences between the interface that you may be already familiar with, which is the interface of the registered employees and the interface of the operators because only by understanding very well what are the different tasks and what are the differences you are able to then uh, train them in uh, in the right way and in particular there are a few things that we want to uh, stress and one is about general operations at the cold room so how should the operator perform the check-in the checkouts that's of course the basics but also uh, going maybe a bit more in detail into how does Cultivate support the tracking of the crop quality and how can we make this um, optimal? And also very importantly, how can we use the app to then track the impact of using the cold rooms and why are the operators important in this process? All right, so to start off, um, we have discussed last week and Simran, or oh, last time, and Simran had explained this very well. There could be different scenarios in which you are operating your rooms, right? So this means that um, it could be that it's a single team that manages and operates the room. In that case, the operators are really direct employees of the company, but it could also be that maybe the operators are a figure that is separate from your company, maybe somebody from a local community or from um, an FPO or a cooperative. For the sake of simplicity, within the, your BCCA project, we are really trying to merge all these possible scenario in the situation in which we have a set of registered employees who we identify with the management team of the cooling company and also with the project manager, project manager role for the pilots. So somebody whose role is more to oversee whatever is happening at the pilots and in the cold rooms and the operator role 
who we define a bit as the face of the cold rooms in the sense of being the persons that are physically present by the cold room and who are the ones who are interacting most of the times with the end users, being them farmers or traders. So from the perspective of the registered employees, and we have covered this a bit in the previous session, the, the main role and responsibilities are really to oversee and manage the, the pilots, understand what is happening at the cold rooms. And we have developed Cultivate with the idea in mind of empowering the registered employees to being able to track what's happening at the cold rooms without having to be physically there. And the role that we are discussing a lot today, it's also a role of a trainer in the sense of being able to onboard the operators so that then they can perform the, uh, the operations at the room. I think there, are, there should be some operators in this group today, uh, which is amazing, but we do know that sometimes it's a bit difficult for operators who are on the ground to be able to follow our sessions. And this is why we would like you to be a bit the you register employees, the trainers who then can train the operator. Okay, so that's a bit the scope of, of today's sessions. Um, and from the operator's perspective, the main responsibilities that we would assign to this role are interacting with the farmers, both in the sense of performing the check-in and the check-outs at the room and also within the app, collecting the payments, of course, from the users, and we will see how this is done within the app. Um, making sure, so having enough technical knowledge to make sure that the room is always functioning, clean and uh, operational, maybe also setting up the temperature in some scenarios, and also importantly, communicating with the farmers about anything that relates to the crates they have in storage. So we have seen that a big issue is how can we build trust in the rooms and in the solution in general. So how do we make sure that the farmers feel safe in storing the crates in the rooms? And for that, um, one thing is of course, informing them and enabling them to understand which is the benefit that they can gain from cold storage. But another important aspect is also to keep them updated of what is happening at the room. And what I mean by that is especially in the direction of what's happening to their crop. How do we make sure that they are not paying a daily fee um, for the crop to then get spoiled? So how do we make sure that in case something is happening so that the crops are about to get spoiled within the room, the operators can communicate with them and inform them about, about this. And uh, one thing that we will cover as well is the fact that um, the operators play a very important role in collecting information from the cooling users that then can be used for us to track which is the impact of the, the solution. And what I mean by this is mostly in terms of reduction of post-service loss and increase in the income or in the selling price that the user experience. And for this, we, it's very important that we have first-hand data that can, as you will see, can be recorded within the Cultivate app. So, more technically, going a bit into the, the app, um, I just want to remind you what we covered last time, which is a very important fact that is the register employee who is registering and signing up the company, which means that, as you see here in the first screen, right, the first person of the company signs up uh, the company and him or herself, and these have all done it already, so that's, that's very good. And then it's the registered employee who's inviting other people to join the app and also the operators, okay? So in this sense, the operators uh, only join by invitation. They don't register on the app on their own because otherwise it's difficult for us to track to which company does a given operator belong to, in a sense. Um, and then we have covered in the last module the main responsibility of the registered employee within the app. We will have time later in the Q&A for you to ask questions in case you have them, but just as a general reminder, we have seen that the, the main task of registered employee is to set up the company in the, in the Cultivate app, which basically means to set up the cooling units, to set up the pricing model, and then to set up the sensors if there are, and to assign the operators to the different rooms. And then, the registered employee can relax in a sense because 
all the core operations on the day-to-day -day basis are done by the operators, which is what we're going to see in the walkthrough in a second. And um, right now, one important responsibility of the operator is also to sign up the cooling user, meaning if there is a new farmer or a new trader arriving to the room, um, the operator will sign up this person the first time so that a check-in can be done that it's associated with that person. You will see, you see, however, here in the second screen that there is another user, which is the cooling user, which is um, coming up in the next month or so, which means that in case a farmer or a trader have a smartphone, they can also monitor what is in the room directly without having to ask the operator. Okay, so there is going to be in the future, and we will cover this in one of the next sessions, two options for the cooling users either to be registered by the operator in case they don't have a smartphone or they don't want to use the smartphone for this. And uh, the second option being the cooling user registering him or herself and being able to track the quality of their crops and making sure that they understand what is in storage where uh, with their own smartphone. Um, right. So I will now jump into the app. Um, but before that, in case there are any pressing questions or what we just discussed, um, please go ahead. Okay, if not, let me switch from the presentation to Cultivate. So here we are. Okay, so I hope you're already, yeah. I have a question, Roberta. Please, go ahead. Yes. So we had the created our company and created the test location mm -hmm. and also assigned the operators, but mm -hmm. now we don't see anything inside the app. It's all gone. What do you mean it's all gone? Yeah, which means that uh, I, I can only see the company management. Mm -hmm. In that, I can see the account details, which shows my account details. Mm -hmm. But when I go further to uh, the, uh, you know, the menu, which says that the management, in that the company details are not there now, the locations are not there, operators are not there. So... Okay, this shouldn't be like this, <laughs> for sure. This I can say. Uh, I mean, it's difficult to, to tell you what's wrong right now without seeing it, but maybe we can take some time in, in the end to cover this. That's okay. definitely not, not how it's, it's supposed to be. This I can already say. Um, anything else? Okay, then if not, we go into the app. So this screen we have already seen multiple times by now. And today we are gonna log in as an operator. So I'm going to use my operator's credential. Um, one thing that I want to mention is the fact that um, what we want to do today is we want you to familiarize yourself with the operator's interface. So ideally, what this means is that you can also create an operator's account, like a test account or a fake account for now, so that you can explore how this looks. An important thing that I want to mention, however, is that um, one phone number can be used only once because this is the identifier for our users, which means that um, you will need two different phone numbers to access the app as a registered employee as a, and as an operator. You can ask somebody from your family or some friends, or it doesn't really matter because we don't use the phone number for anything else than the authentication. Uh, but it's important that you have this um, clear, otherwise it, you will get stuck because you don't understand why is the invitation for an operator who has the same number as you uh, why is it not working? Okay, this is the reason. So one phone number, one user. That's why I have um, a specific number for the registered employee, and uh, now I'm using a separate one for um, for the operator. Okay. So so when you log in as an operator, the interface looks quite similar to what you have already seen. The main difference is that um, if you click on the cooling unit, the operator will only see the cooling unit he or she has been assigned to. Okay? The registered employee can see all the cooling units of the company, but the operator is only the one in which uh, he or she has been assigned to. And for, the, for what we have seen so far with the companies we worked with, usually 
there is this rule, which is one operator, one cooling unit, meaning that usually one operator is hired to work only one cooling unit, and also that one cooling unit has only one operator. However, in the app, we can cover um, all other cases as well, meaning imagine the case in which you have two cold rooms that are sitting close by. Maybe there is one operator which is active in both rooms. That's perfectly fine. And the same way, maybe you have two operators working at the same cold room because maybe they are working part-time, that case can also be covered, okay? So there is uh, total flexibility in, in this type of assignment. And um, my operator now can see the three rooms he, he has been, it's called Leo, so he, he has been assigned to. We're gonna switch to one of these. And what you see here are um, the produce that is currently in storage, okay? Which is exactly the same that the registered employee would see. And uh, just as a reminder, what you see here is the fact that, for example, these tomatoes have been checked in uh, one day ago or today. They there are five crates of it. Um, and they have been checked in by a farmer or a trader who's called Lisa. If you click on it, then you see a detailed view of, um, of this. And also you see the contact number of the cooling user in case the operator needs to contact this person, for example, because the crates are about to get spoiled, or in case the operator, the farmer wants to get informed about the prices um, of, um, of, this, of this specific crop, okay? Uh, and also what you see down here is uh, this bar, which is in, in this case is green. This is a um, prediction of what is the remaining um, storage life of the produce, in this case, nine days and which is the remaining quality. In this case is 51%. You see that the bar is almost halfway. Um, we are gonna spend a lot more time in the next session, which is next week, about understanding the details of this model, which we call the shelf life model or the time to pick up model. And we are gonna have a session by EMPA, who are our collaborators. They do a lot of research and they're really leading experts in modeling how fruits and vegetables age with time, depending on the temperature that it's inside of the room. And this is why we had also stressed the importance of using the sensors to precisely track which is the temperature inside of the room. So a lot more on this in the next sessions, but still to give you an overview um, of what you can expect and what you see here, what they have done basically is that they have developed models for 26 crops, so different types of fruits and vegetables where they can predict with a, with a high accuracy what will happen to uh, a specific crate that you have in storage, depending on which is the crop type, which is the temperature inside of the room, and which is the initial quality of this crate when it first arrives to the room. So based on these three factors, what happens is that there is a model in the backend of the app that calculates and constantly updates, which is the remaining quality. And so which is the number of days that the, the produce is still gonna be good for. So that there is enough time, that is, uh, the produce is good while inside of the room. And also there is enough time for the user to come pick it up and sell it. And the different colors here on the side and on this number indicate which is the, um, uh, the situation basically, okay? So green means there are still enough days. So more than five days, you see here, for example, oops, you see here, for example, nine and 18. Uh, gray means that we don't have currently a model for that specific crop type. So we cannot make any prediction. And red means that uh, it's less than two days. Okay, so in this case, zero days. And then there is something intermediate, which I don't have right now, which is yellow, if it's between two and five days. So this is really visually very um, clear for the operators. Who, what are the crates that needs the most attention, okay? Um, and what you can also do is in case now, I mean, there are not so many, but you can imagine that in a room there are many more check-ins done. So many more crates than the ones that I have here. So what you can do also is that you can filter by the time to pick up so that you see on top the one that required the most attention because they're about to get spoiled. And also you can filter by the name of the farmer. If you want, for example, Lisa, then I would see uh, all the different crates and check-ins that she has done. Um, 
linked to this, an important, um, so if you are wondering how is this calculated or why you will see that over time this, this changes, okay? And you might be wondering, okay, what does it depend on? The variable that changes over time is the temperature of the room, right? And these you can see in clicking on cooling units and then going to room conditions. So what we have done in this case is we have connected this unit with a sensor. And also we are gonna have a session on this next week to um, clarify how this can be done with the sensor that we have sent to you. But what you see here basically is the trace. Uh, you see that the temperature is oscillating between four, uh, between uh, five and six degrees. And it's basically this trace that it's the input for the shelf life model that then is used to predict the number of days left. Okay. Um, another thing that I want to show you is the history. So here you can see for the unit we are uh, covering right now, what has been all the checkouts and all the check-in done. And also for the checkouts, you see these three dots where what you can do is you can see more details. And in case there is more than one operator, you can also see who has been done doing this operation. Okay, so that in case something is wrong or you need to check in with, or you need to check basically with one of uh, one specific set of crates, you know who has been doing this. And this is the same, uh, the same view that the registered employee would, would see as well. Okay. Um, then yet another thing is in the cooling units, not only you can see the temperature graph, which is what is here, but you can also see um, which is the occupancy right now and which is the predicted occupancy in the next days. And this is important in case you have, in case this is important for the operator in case um, farmers arrive to the room um, wanting to store and wanting to know if there is going to be space tomorrow. Okay, so this helps you a bit understand is there going to be space or not so that the, the farmers can be better informed and don't risk coming to the room and then um, being unable to store the crates because there is no more space. Uh, and then finally, uh, crates info has a summary of so the same that you see in the dashboard but um, grouped by the type of commodity. You see how much basically 100 would be the, the full amount of crates that are stored now, how much of those are beans, how much of those are bananas, et cetera. And in the last column, which is actually the most important, you see which is the optimal temperature for each of those commodities. And this is supposed to help you or help the operator, depending on who's doing this operation, setting up the right temperature in the room. We know uh, from experience and from uh, visits on the ground that this is a very tricky point because one of the main obstacles, and I'm sure many of you are already familiar with this, is how do I set up the temperature inside of the room if I have multiple crates of different commodities and those commodities have a different optimal uh, temperature. And this is something the EMPA team is working very actively on. And we do know that this is an open research question. Okay, so we are not, Right now, we are not in the position of uh, advising you on one specific temperature because there are a lot of variables that come into play. But what we are, um, what we are doing is here basically enabling you to have an overview, at least, of how much is there of what. And also what we will cover in the material that we will share with you and in the next session with EMPA is how can we optimize the placement of the crates, for example, within the room so that uh, nothing gets spoiled, basically. So to make sure that um, the crops that prefer a warmer temperature, a colder temperature, are in the right place okay, within the room. Um, there are other, co other conditions as well, for example, ethylene production. So we know that it's not even just about the temperature, but this is a first step in, in trying to, to support you in this, uh, in this decision. Okay, So this is what you can see um, here. Um, okay, so let's think about the scenario in which um, a farmer arrives to the room and wants to do a check-in. What should the operator do? You see on the bottom right that there is this button. This is something that is specific for the operator. So you will not see this if you're a registered employee because the registered employee is not supposed to be at the room and is not supposed to do the check-in. Okay, so this is a operator-specific property. Uh, or like feature. So you click here, then you click on the green button, and this is how you start a check-in. First of all, of course, you have to select who's the farmer who has just come. 
let's assume for now that this is a person that has been already used in the room. So this is somebody that the operator has already registered at least uh, once because this person has done maybe just already one check-in. So let's assume that is Pratip who came to the room. Uh, I confirm. And then here I can add the crates. Okay, so first you can, uh, to not have a very long list of crates, we have split this in fruits, vegetables, and root vegetables. So let's imagine, for example, that uh, Pratip has brought broccoli to the room. Then the operator needs to specify how many crates? I don't know, seven. Um, and then this is an optional panel in case the operator in the current operations that are done right now is also waiting the crates. We know that this is, depends a bit on your pricing model usually. So we have seen scenarios in which the price is per crate. So the, the exact number of kilos, it's not really relevant. And we have seen other scenarios in which the price is per day, of course, but also per kilo. So in that case, probably there is gonna be a weighing scale next to the room where uh, this is done. 25 is the in, the, in my case, in the specific case of my company is the standard weight, but you can adjust this here, okay? Also in the scenario, which maybe uh, we have seen this as well a lot, in which you maybe have, you come with, a, with a, you know, your box or something that it's not the standard crate size. And then you see that you have two boxes and a half, right? In this case, um, you, can, uh, you can adjust the, the kilos here. But if, if you don't do this operation because you don't wait, that's okay, you can just keep it, nothing will happen. And then the operator is also um, supposed to ask to the farmers how long he's in he or she is intending to store. This is also optional, but it's useful in case uh, the farmer already knows. For example, the market is gonna be in three days, the cold room is at the market, so it's very likely that the farmer knows already that you know, on Thursday I'm gonna come to the room because there is a market. And if you input this, um, this is going to be reflected in the predicted occupancy that we saw before. Otherwise, you leave it empty. doesn't matter. Okay. Let's say I know that I'm going to come in. Uh, well, I asked the farmers and the farmers told me, I know that I'm going to come in two days because there is the market. So we just put two. And this is helpful because then it also gives an estimate of the price. So the farmer knows when he comes back, how much he or she has to pay. Then you confirm. Then there is one last question, which is about when was the crop harvested? And this is very important. It's not optional, it's obligatory, because this helps us understand which is the initial quality of the produce when it arrives at the room. Okay, so this is, a, of course, it's an approximation, but our reasoning behind it is that if it has been harvested today, it's probably going to be fresh. But if it has been harvested yesterday, and probably it is not been stored in cold storage, from yesterday to today, this means that it has already lost some quality because it was stored maybe outdoor in a shaded place for some hours, okay? So the answers that you give here map to a index of initial quality that is crop specific because, you know, strawberries, if they stay one day outside, this is really bad for the quality, but bananas might not be as sensitive, okay? So you just answer this one and depending on this, then the initial, time to pick up is calculated, okay? Let's say yesterday. Then here you see a summary. If you want, you can also add other crates of another, uh, of another crop. So for example, I don't know, let's add some fruits, let's add some uh, bananas, uh, two crates. I don't know how long I want to store, so I just leave it empty. Um, they were harvested today. This one, for the sake of the summary, we can skip. And now you see that uh, I'm checking in seven crates of broccoli and two crates of banana. If I'm happy with it, and there is nothing else, then I confirm. And what happens when you confirm, and this is successfully completed, is that, this will skip for a second, is that the broccoli and the banana have been added to the list of items you have. And you see that, for example, in the case of broccoli, we have no time to pick up model, so that's why it's gray. And for the bananas that were harvested today, no hurries. They can stay here at this specific temperature that it's currently inside of the room for 45 days. So no need for the farmer to hurry. Um, all right. And also this, uh, the operation that we just did, so the check-in, is going to be reflected in the history. So you see here that we added nine crates in total, so seven broccoli and two banana, or the other way around. Um, this is the time and also the price that is expected per day. 
And this is something that also the registered employee can see in real time, which means that without physically being at the room, the registered employee can see what is happening right now at the room. Um, okay, uh, are there questions up to now? Otherwise we move to the checkout. Hi, I have a few questions. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, regarding earlier, like right now, you're showing um the types of crops, right? So I was wondering if, for example, this um estimation of the number of days that it can be in storage, mm -hmm. um, does it apply to different varieties of tomatoes, or like is this an average computation, or is it um for a specific type? Yeah. So for now, for simplicity, this is for one uh type of tomato. What EMPA has, do, has done, however, is that for some crops, they have been doing this specific model for different types of tomato, for different type of the same crop. Okay, so I don't know, like uh, um, different type of bananas or different type of mangoes. I do think they also have something with tomatoes. So this is something that for simplicity, we have not added so far, um, but we are thinking of including it potentially in, in the future. Okay. So short answer right now, one type. <laughs> okay, got it. Okay, if there are no more, I mean, if there is something more, then we can also address it in the in the Q and A later. So it's not not urgent. I just that I'm talking so much, so I just also don't want to overwhelm you with uh, with information, and I want to give you a chance to uh, to answer uh, questions that you have. So, yeah. Okay. Thank let's, you. Sure. Let's cover now the opposite scenario. So the scenario in which a farmer is coming to the room and wants to check out some produce. In this case, um, you see that there is there are not so many things in storage, so it's quite easy to to check. For example, let's imagine uh, Pratip comes. He wants to pick up the beans, which, as you see, have zero days of remaining shelf life. So that's quite urgent. Maybe is the operator who called Pratip saying, "Hey, Pratip, you really need to come because these are about to get spoiled." and Pratip comes to the room. In this case, um, you see it, right? Because there are not so many items. Otherwise, what you can do as well is you can filter here and you see uh, what he has in storage or you can filter by crop as well, okay? So you can also filter by beans and then you will see these are the only one left. If you click here and you are an operator, then what you will see is that in the lower side, there is this checkout button from which the check-in can be initiated. This is one of the two ways in which you can initiate a checkout. Uh, so you click here, and then here you see all the all the crates. Um, it's also possible. So in this case, you see that the default is that you are checking out all the crates at once. But this doesn't have to be like this. So maybe uh, Pratip comes with a small truck. He only has space for five crates, in which case you can just select five of them and leave the rest inside. And maybe he's coming later to pick them up. OK, so in this case, I've selected my five crates that I want to check out. I click on next. And then what you see here is a summary of what uh, we are checking out. So how many crates, what's the total weight, what was the price per day? And as you have seen in the check-in, the operator has no impact on the, on the pricing, right? The pricing is done at the level of the registered employees. So this is just the result of, of it. And now you see the total because they have been in storage for eight days, okay? So this is the total amount of, um, um, of money that the, the farmer should give to the operators for the checkout to be completed. Uh, we have included the options of adding a discount. We know that sometimes depending on how many days it was in storage or maybe depending on uh, how often does the customer come to the room, there could be some different tariffs, in which case you can add your, your discount here, uh, here, and you see that it's gonna be uh, removed from the total price. And then there is one more um, step, which is this, uh, which is selecting which has been the payment type. We imagine that in most of the cases, this operation is done cash, but in case it's not, we wanted to differentiate because then it's easier for you to track when you look at the revenue screen, how was the payment done? What, what is the, um, the money coming from all the different streams? Okay, so you just select, I would say probably 99% of the cases is cash, but who knows? Uh, and then the operator marks this as paid. Okay? So we are not having a digital payment included for now, but we're just relying on the operator to confirm that the item, that the amount has been fully paid. And in that case, you press OK. And so what will happen 
then uh, this we skip for now is that um, um, the number in this case we haven't checked out all the crates right there were 13 crates and now only nine are left and you can see the same in history so you see here that five crates of beans have been removed um, and what you can do is also you can click here you can see the details that we were saying before and you can also download a receipt of this operation and you can also send a sms receipt to the farmer if he or she wants it um, all right so one more thing related to the checkout is that, as I was saying, this is one option to start a checkout. The other option is the scenario in which maybe a farmer comes and he, want, he or she wants to check out crates that he has brought in at different times, okay? Because here they are grouped by, by when a check-in was done. So in case you can see here, for example, that now Pratip has a lot of, um, thing, has a lot of things uh, checked in and maybe he wants to remove all of them. In that case, one option is you click on all the different items and you do what we have just seen for all of them, but that maybe is not optimal. So the other option is that you can go to the bottom, click checkout, you select which farmer, so let's say Pratip, you select a cooling unit, and then you see everything that he has in storage. So the beans that were remaining, then there is some bananas, the bottle gourd, a lot of things. And from here, you can select what you want to check out in that specific scenario uh, or everything, okay, in case. And then the same happens as before. So just for an, ex and as an example, you go to next, you have the same screen that we saw before where you have to specify what's the payment type, confirm that it's paid, and then you also remove it from, from the room, just the same, okay? Just a different way of starting the process. Um, okay, then one more thing that I want to cover is the fact that uh, what happens in the case in which a farmer comes to the room for the first time. So we have not registered this farmer yet. So I would be tempted as an operator to start a check-in, clicking here, but then uh, maybe I didn't even remember, you know, I'm, go I'm looking for, I don't know, patients and I don't see any, oops, any patients. So what can I do? I can click here to cover the case in which the cooling user that I'm trying to do the check-in for is not in the list. And what this does is basically this brings you to the screen in which you can sign up a new cooling user. So if you click there, you see the list of cooling users that have been registered already, and you can click on plus. By clicking here, you can enter a new one. So let's say patients. Uh, you can specify the gender, which is just for statistics, and then you have to input her phone number. Um, and uh, the parent, that's not very relevant. Um, and then you click on add. Okay, this, is the this has to be a, a true for number. Okay, so I'm just guessing. Yeah. Um, okay, and then what comes next is a survey. So this is the, we are arriving to the section in which we're trying to um, stress the fact that it's very important to that one of the advantages of using Cultivate is also that you can use it to track some metrics that could be important for you to report on the impact of cold storage. Potentially could help you uh, attract more funding or just um, showing, like proving that uh, what you are doing is uh, very valuable. And of course, it also helps us to understand what is the situation in the different rooms and how, uh, what are the, the local differences between the, the, the different rooms that we, are, we have within the Cultivate app. So this survey contains basically three sections, uh, but it should be rather quick to um, fill in. The first is a question about uh, trying to understand whether the new user is a farmer or a trader, um, just for really for, for statistics, for understanding more about the customer base. And then we want to understand whether this user has, is a new user or has already been using the cold room. Has been using already the cold room is basically covering the scenario in which maybe you already have an operational cold room and you are using Mala registers, but now we are switching over to Cultivate. So this person has already been using the room, but without Cultivate, okay, with the, with the manual register. In which case you can specify for how many months. 
this person has been using the room already. Why is this relevant? It's relevant because the data that we're trying to collect here is data that we want to use as baseline. So we want to report on which is the situation in terms of how much food, do, how much uh, crops do they lose and what's the price that they get for the crop that they produce before using the room um, at the beginning of the intervention, if you want. And then we want to compare this with data as they use the room. And we will see in a second how to do this. So it's important that this reflects uh, that we differentiate between the case in which the answers that are given here are for um, um, a history that doesn't include cold storage or for the situation in which the user has already been using the cold room. Okay? So this is something you can specify here. You can change the number of months. And then the third question, which is also the most important one, is what are the crops that this user is expected to bring to the room? Okay, so an intersection between the crops that are produced or traded by, so procured by the user and the one that um, he, he or she thinks it's valuable to bring to the room in the sense that maybe they're perishable, maybe they are high value crop. So for we, just not to make the survey too long, we just give three options, three, um, three commodity. And um, it's not mandatory to fill them all in. So you, if there is only one, it's also okay. So for example, uh, I ask patients and patient tells me that usually she, she's intending to bring to the room carrots. So I select this from the list. And then we are asking her on average, how much does she, she usually produces in a season? Okay, to make it simple, thousand kilos. And then we want to understand of these thousand kilos, um, how much of this gets lost or is distress, or it's or the the user is forced to distress sell, because we want to understand what is the um, how large is the issue with post harvest loss when we are starting the the usage of the cold drop. Okay, so for example, maybe she declares that she has three hundred, she loses three hundred kilos um, every season, more or less, because I don't know there is no cold storage or transport issues or something else, and then she sells all the rest none of the carrots are used for self-consumption. Um, and then to make it specific on a monthly basis, we also want to understand how long is the season for carrots so that we can do a statistics per month. I don't know, let's say four. And then the last question is, how was the price for um, the, the average selling price that she gets? Okay, So this should be, include both the, the, the price that she gets and the price at, uh, that she's, when she's forced to distress sell. An average of that, so that we know more or less um, what's the sit current situation, basically. Uh, okay, the currency, we have done everything in rupees because my company right now is in India, so I will keep it to rupees. And, and that's it. Um, and in case she produces more crops, you can also fill this in for a second crop. Okay, so commodity one would be carrots, and then commodity two you can specify, or you can just uh, confirm and finish. What you see here is, the, is that there is a complete later option, which means in case the farmer doesn't have time, this time to fill in the survey, you can also just register this person without filling in the survey. And you can, you can find it again and ask the user to fill it in at a later point. So the way which this works is that, for example, uh, let's say um, I want to complete later. So because I don't know, maybe she wants to input the two commodity uh, later. Uh, well, no, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's say for some reason we haven't done this exercise, she was like, no, I'm in a hurry, I cannot do it right now, then you do complete later. And then what you can do is you see that she has been added to the list, you can click, and you can see that there is a cooling use, user survey, so she can fill this in later. And in this case, it has recorded the information that we have stored so far. Okay, so she can just fill it in, for example, for uh, the remaining commodity that we haven't filled in, but the carrot, as you see, are, are already there, okay? Um, we know that it's not always simple for both the operators and the farmer to um, get this data. And we understand that not all farmers might be able to remember or to know how, how much they produce in the season, maybe because they don't have a way of waiting this. We are also considering the option of maybe having here instead of kilos, another unit, maybe crates, uh, 
yeah, we are a bit exploring this and we are happy to get your feedback um, after you have done this a couple of times so you can see a bit how the farmers react. And then maybe we can collect your feedback and see how we can improve this part to be as simple as possible for you to complete. Um, so in this case, now patience has been added. Okay, so um, what this means is basically that when you want to start a check-in for this person, uh, she's going to be in the list. So you can just select her and then start continue the check-in as we saw before. And also I want to show you that uh, in case you have something like a farmer workshop in which you add a lot of new people uh, all at once, you can do this by going to management and then pooling users. This is something that only the operator sees, not the registered employees. And you can you end up in the same screen that you have seen before. Okay, so you click on plus, then you specify this, and then you go to the survey. Um, do you have questions on this before I move on? Okay, then let me drink a sip of water. And then I want to show you um, for what we're actually using this data, right? So now we really ask you to inform the operators about the fact that they should be recording this information for the different cool users that come to the room. And this, just to be, make it clear, this is a one-time thing, right? This, this you only do when you sign up a new cooling user and then that's done. Now, how do we use this data? We want to compare this data with what we are doing when, um, uh, so what happens as the user continues using the room, okay? And for these purposes, what we have is we have a very short survey that are linked to checkouts. So if you click on the three dots here, uh, you will see that there are the things that we've already discussed, see detail, PDF, and SMS receipt. And there is a fourth one, which is what we call a market survey. So if you click here, uh, you see a, a, a form that it's very short. It just has basically uh, four questions. One is understanding um, where the user has sold the produce. For example, uh, directly at the farm gate when so that we understand how many days after it was checked out right of course we have the information about when the checkout was done and so we just want to compare this with how many days because this helps us estimate what is the quality probably of the produce when it was sold was it immediately after cold storage or was there a, or was there a time in which this stayed unrefrigerated uh, maybe because the market was for example the day after okay so maybe yesterday um, What's the price that you receive for that? Um, I don't know, 14 rupees. And we then ask if something of what was in storage got lost, maybe because of transport issues, or maybe because the user, despite the high quality or the higher quality of the produce, was forced to distress sell in the end of the day. I don't know. So what we do is we basically use um, multiple answers. So we average over multiple answers of uh, the market survey to compare then what was the situation when the user first registers versus what is the situation, how is the situation evolving, okay? Um, and so this is really a short one. The idea is that um, the, op the operator asks the farmer to fill this in and also that um, the operator is reminded to do so uh, if he hasn't done, uh, he or she has not done it yet by the red dot. So that's what the red dot means. And also the red dot appears here as a notification. You will see that one of the notification type is filling the market survey for that specific movement because some days have passed and you have not done it yet. Um, as we are here, notifications, the operator has three types of notification that he or she can see. One is about the market survey, as we've just discussed. One is about the sensor. So in case you have sensors connected to one of the room, but something is wrong uh, because we haven't received any data, it's also showing here so that you can maybe contact the maintenance or a technician to see what's wrong. Um, because we want you, both you, the operator, and you, the registered employee, to be informed about the fact that um, the temperature that we're using to calculate the time to pick up might not be accurate, okay? And then the third type of notification for the operators is about crates that are about to get spoiled. So for example, these are the beans that we checked out before, um, which have reached a low shelf, a low time to pick up, 
so lower than two days, in which case you get a notification so that you can notify the user about the fact that if he or she doesn't want this, this, this uh, crate to get spoiled, then he should come or she should come to the room to pick it up. Um, okay, I think I've already talked a lot. <laughs> um, one more thing that I want to show you, and this is really uh, the end of the walkthrough, is how, um, where is the information material, okay? Um, and which is this information material that we are uh, talking about. So this is meant to be a help for the operators, but actually also for the registered employee to navigate the application in case maybe they have done a training with you. Uh, everything seemed fine, but then they are on, on the ground and they forgot about some of the things you discussed. So there are two things uh, here. One thing, well, three things. One thing is a tutorial. So the first time, and probably you have seen it already as a registered employee, the first time that you log in, you see this tutorial. The tutorial is different, of course, if you're an operator or if you're a registered employee, because your tasks are different. And in case you want to watch it again after the first time, you, you find it here. So you click and then you see the whole, the whole tutorial. You can go over the different pages. That's one thing. Second thing is um, the FAQ. So we have prepared quite an extensive list of questions that you might be asking uh, or that the operator might be asking. And the questions that you see here are also different depending on the user type. So for example, in the operators list, there are things uh, related to the check-in that of course the, oops, the registered employee doesn't have. Um, the third thing that it's also important is the knowledge hub, which is a page, okay, I'm not quite going back, but this is this page which helps you um, getting a summary of what is the optimal temperature for the, specific, for the different crops and which is at that temperature, the optimal storage life. So that um, apart from the time to pick up model and also for the model for the crops for which we don't have a time to pick up model, at least you have an overview. And we are uh, expanding the knowledge hub to also include information that we will cover in the session of next week about uh, how to arrange crates when you have multi-commodity, what are the things you should look, look out for in terms of, for example, ethylene production or uh, some advice on how to set the temperature. This is something that it's not there yet, but we are um, actively working to, to integrate this. Um, last thing that I want to say is that also, uh, if you log out, there are some um, FAQ also here. These are more generic in uh, about the app itself. Okay, so they're not the same that you see once you are logged in, because these are more meant to uh, instruct you about the, the the purpose or the scope of of the app. And then very last thing <laughs> I promise is that um, here you can change the language. This is quite important, especially for operators, because then both the operators and the farmer can see the interface in a language that might be more familiar to them than English. Um, so you can do this here. You can change the language here, for example, and then you can log in. And this is um, also when you log in, the interface is in Hindi, for example. Or you can also change the language directly from within the once you are logged in, basically. Um, so these are the two. These are the two options. And as we were discussing uh, last time, for now there are only these three languages supported, but we actually want to integrate more. And so um, we can maybe discuss this offline or on Slack. But in case you think that there is a strong need for um, a language of uh, the area where your room is to be integrated, please let us know because it will take us some time to integrate this. So it's not like from one day to the next we will have it ready and it would be important to have it ready for when the pilot are, um, are kicking off, which is relatively soon. So in that sense, it's important that um, we have enough time to plan this a bit ahead. Okay, um, are there questions so far? Um, otherwise, I will stop sharing uh, and go back to the slides for really the last two slides of the presentation.